Hi, it's James from Junior Developer Central, and welcome to this tutorial on JQ, the JSON command line processor. So in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use JQ to pass some JSON input and then actually store a particular property from the JSON into a variable. So this will work with any JSON data source, but what better place to get some JSON than an API? So I've just pulled up the Chuck Norris database API. And if we scroll down, you can see to get data from the API, you can simply just send a call to this URL. Uh, but I'm actually gonna take this one at the bottom here where you can get three random Chuck Norris jokes come back. And if I was just to send the request in the browser, so do a get request for that information, you'll see this is the kind of data that comes back from the API. So back on the command prompt, I can actually send a request to the API using a curl command. So if I say curl and then pass in that URL, you'll see the data comes back the same, but it's not very well formatted. And that's where we can use JQ to actually parse this data and display it in a much more friendly way. If I just send that request again. Uh, I'll just make sure it's silent so it doesn't display any of the loading information and just pipe the result of that into the JQ processor and hit enter. You'll see, you can see the data comes back again, but it's been nicely formatted and highlighted for us. So that's probably the first advantage of using JQ on the command line, but we can also do more with it. We can actually access properties of the results. Uh, so just to show you the structure. So the main data that we're interested in is in a property called value, and it's an array of those three jokes that have come back. So if I wanted to access the first joke, for example, I could send the request again, um, but we pass what's known as a filter into JQ. And the first filter, which is kind of used by default, is just the dot, which just means everything. So if you hit enter, you'll see we get the same response again. Um, but what I can say is I can get just the value that comes back. So in a similar way that you would use this in JavaScript, you can access the individual properties of the JSON. So if I hit enter now, you'll see that I just get the array come back. Um, I don't have that type property in there. It's just the contents that were in the value property. So I can just access part of that array as well. So if I wanted to access the first joke, obviously the array being zero indexed, if I hit enter, you'll see I only get that first joke come back. And you can keep digging deeper with that as well. So I can access just the joke property of that particular array item. And there's no restriction on the processing on that. So for example, if there were categories listed in this array, there are none in this particular one, we could obviously access those in the similar way that we've accessed the, the first item in the value property. So I promised you at the start of the video that we'd uh, save this into a variable. So let's do that now. Let's just call it uh, set a variable called joke. And the way we save the result of the process file is just to do dollar and then an open parentheses. And then we just close the parentheses at the end. So if I hit enter, and if I was just to echo out joke name and hit enter, you'll see I've now got that string saved into our variable, which could be used in script or other parts of your command line environment. So that's pretty much it. You can do a few more complicated things with JQ, but hopefully this has given you a flavor of how to use it and some examples of where it might be useful for you. If you found the video useful, just drop me a comment below and give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more web development tutorials and tips.